home is in heaven because our life principle comes directly from God. It doesn't come from the natural world. Our bodies do. Culture does a great job of suppressing the truth, canceling the truth, um, censoring the truth. It's God's church. He created the Catholic Church. Science and faith are, are compatible. Actually, you couldn't have science without a knowable universe. God's in charge of life does not come from the natural world. That's a huge game changer in the debate. Hello and welcome to Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa for In Conversation With. Our guest today is a practicing board-certified emergency physicians all over who noted a rapid rise of depression and suicides and other behavioral disorders in the youth. He searched for a solution, and the truth led him to Father Robert Spitzer's Magic Center in 2015, where he is currently a board member. He presents the amazing 21st century validated medical scientific evidence that the Eucharist is the living body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Let's welcome Dr. Scott French. Hello, doctor. Hi, Donna. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Doctor. The age-old conflict between faith and science continues to rise, even among Catholics. Secular worldview has uh, crept into a very great extent. And as a man of science, what is your vision about reconciling this conflict so that those who are confused may be enlightened? Yeah, that's actually a, um, a myth. Uh, science and faith are, are compatible. Actually, you couldn't have science without a knowable universe that could be discovered. We, that we can discover the natural laws like entropy, speed of light, all those sorts of things that are natural laws that define what science is. Science is about probability. And so it's also, science can be a kind of a messy process where we think one thing and then it finds out that something else is really true. Like for example, with COVID, when we had uh, people that were low oxygen, hypoxic, we were intubating them to you know, raise their oxygen level, and we found out that was making it worse. So what we had to do instead was give them anti-inflammatory. So science will eventually get to the truth, but it's an iterative process. Our current culture, though, believes in relativism, that there is no absolute truth, which is a logical contradiction. And that logical contradiction then leads to people not being allowed to debate because you know, there's my truth and there's truth. There is absolute truth and there is truth in science. And so we don't hear that because we have censorship now. Uh, we have you know, viewpoint discrimination because if we don't go along with the culture and narrative, then we're shut down and we're, uh, we're canceled. And that is really very unhealthy for our culture as well as for medical practice. So yeah, we're gonna explore what science really shows. We just don't hear this because our culture does a great job of hiding the truth. You know, that's actually true. The bandwagon of relativism, like how do you see truth? What is truth? Somebody might say, this is my truth and that is your truth. So uh, that was a good answer. Thank you so much. Um, I, I believe too that with order in our universe, there is a supreme being, a God who watches over us. So that should help us uh, out with faith. Um, a 2023 well, well, that, study. That, that is, that gets, that, that, that gets back to, that does get back to, um, there actually, there are secularists that now realize that there's, you know, what they call intelligent design. Um, but also uh, we have the Big Bang Theory, which was from George Lemaitre, a Catholic priest, about the origin of the universe. And he was working with um, um, Albert Einstein and at the time, they thought we had an eternal universe, which, again, would be an illogical uh, proposition. He said, well, no, we know there's a finite time that the universe was created. And, um, and then at, th at that moment of the Big Bang, all the natural laws like entropy, which is what we call aging, you know, uh, rocks erode, all those had to be precisely fine-tuned at the moment of the Big Bang so that we could perform science. And so... Uh, so the argument that faith and science are not compatible, you can, you could not have science without natural laws, without a creator that created 
uh, a, a, a universe that's life permitting. That is absolutely true. I agree with that. A 2023 study shows that many Catholics do not believe in the real presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. How do you think this three-year Eucharistic revival uh, initiative has helped Catholics reaffirm their faith in Christ Jesus? Well, it goes back to your first question, and that is we live in an, it really actually we live in an anti-science culture because not only anti-Christian, but anti-science, because again, there's only one view of science that's allowed. If you disagree with that view, then you must be canceled, you must uh, be censored. And so, uh, so our culture says that there is no supernatural, in other words, things beyond what we uh, can scientifically study. Well, uh, what people tend to forget for 2000 years, we understood that life does not come from the natural world. Yes, our bodies come from the natural world, but for life, that life-giving force, our intellect and will, that's not from the natural world because the atheist argument is that is that um, the materials of the world then became alive, right? Well, how does that happen with evolution, right? So so five billion years ago, the earth was rocks and water. How do you get dancing, talking, thinking rocks? How does that happen? Uh, so where does thought come from, right? So, you know, if, if it's really just protons and neutrons that are you know, electrons spinning around those protons and neutrons, how do you get the concept of the number three? The electrons spin a little faster, the protons rotate differently. How do you get thought? How do you get intellect? How do you get language? How do you get life out of, because again, last time I checked, rocks aren't alive. <laughs> so how do you get life from the natural world? So God created both the natural world as you know, the universe, obviously, with the Big Bang, again, most scientists believe in the Big Bang theory, but again, you won't hear that in our culture and in the media because, we, again, we suppress the truth. Even with respect to the uh, that life doesn't come from the natural world, that it comes directly from God, even the uh, New York Academy of Sciences in 2022 said the evidence is overwhelming that your consciousness survives bodily death. And of course, they're not going to call it the soul, but that's what we call the soul, which again is what happens at the moment of conception. DNA does not code for life, it codes for proteins. That spark of life, whatever that is, comes directly from God. That's why we're, we're actually loved into creation, which is what led me you know, into this all because I was looking for why we have so much despair in our youth. And again, because they're told that they're just a bunch of random molecules rather than in fact, they're created by a loving creator, God, and that their home is planet Earth. No, our home is in heaven because our life principle comes directly from God. It doesn't come from the natural world. Our bodies do. So that, you know, that's, that helps explain this explosion in depression, anxiety. Um, and so that's really what's so important about how true science will always point to, to the truth. And we now have scientific evidence with the Eucharistic miracles, the 21st century Eucharistic miracles, the near-death experiences, Big Bang Theory, and then the Shroud of Turin, they all relate to the same thing, that God's in charge of life does not come from the natural world. That's a huge game changer in the debate. Mm -hmm. And with the Eucharistic revival, we have processions in many parts of the country, the different routes, and people are seeing that Jesus is in the Blessed Sacrament. So they're thinking in the past, maybe they're like thinking, oh, he's just a symbol during Mass. So it's a way of helping them understand like the, when we do the procession, Jesus is really with us. Right. So, so exactly. The Eucharist is Jesus Christ, right? Jesus Christ is the church, right? And the body of Christ when he says in Matthew, this is my body because he's the second person of the Trinity. And we just said, it's that God created the material universe and also the immaterial universe. Then he created life when he breathes, you know, in, in Genesis, he breathed life, you know, and even in, in um, other parts in the Bible, it talks about how, you know, a life giving soul. It, there, there's both the material world and the immaterial world. And so, right, this Eucharistic revival is showing that 
this really is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. It, because again, the Eucharistic, 21st century Eucharistic miracles, the blood is type AB blood, the same blood type on the Shroud of Turin. It's also the same blood type that's in the Sudermium of Oviedo. It's also in every 21st century Eucharistic miracle. And it's living blood and living heart tissue and with living white blood cells. And white blood cells only exist outside the body for 30 minutes. And in some cases, these things are 10 years old, living heart tissue. So it's changing, you know, because again, now science, we, God had to wait for us to have the 21st century science to show it. So this is, it's four, in four instances for the 21st century, we have evidence that God's, again, God's in charge of life. And, and the Eucharist truly is, fully human, you know, fully human nature and a fully divine nature. And that heart is Mary's heart, right? Because that's where the heart, because heart, God doesn't have, he's complete, doesn't have a heart, doesn't have blood. That type AB blood is from Mary and type AB blood is the rarest blood type in the world, uh, but it's in 12% of people of Jewish descent. So we have all this scientific evidence and I go around, uh, particularly in the San Francisco diocese, but also other, uh, other across the country and getting this to our kids who have never been exposed to this, even in some of the Catholic schools. And it's transformative because, again, truth is binary. There either is a God or there isn't. You know, there, there, there either was a resurrection or there wasn't. You're, you either have a soul that gives you life or you don't. And, and science actually points to that. You just it, We never hear it because our culture does a great job of suppressing the truth, canceling the truth, um, censoring the truth. The Shroud of Turin, you've talked about that um, earlier, is the most significant scientific evidence that supports that Jesus rose from the dead. So you had a profound experience with the Shroud of Turin in 2015. Can you share your findings and share your personal experience at that time? Sure. So uh, in 2015, the Shroud of Turin was able to be viewed. I always had an interest in the Shroud of Turin science, you know, being uh former faculty and, you know, just lo loving medicine and everything science. Uh, and so my wife and I, we went on our first ever Catholic pilgrimage. And I didn't really understand uh, transubstantiation, the shrouded, and none of that. And, and the materials we got from the uh, Catholic pilgrimage was, uh, you know, it could be a medieval forgery, could be, uh, you know, we're not sure the materials we got from the Vatican. But when you're standing in front of the Shroud of Turin, which is really the burial cloud of Jesus Christ, it's 14 feet by three and a half feet. And it's the, uh, and that image, which is actually a nuclear image on the upper 0.2 microns of the flax garment, the burial cloth, which is what they had in those days. They didn't have cotton in those days. They had used flax. Um, and that gets into why the 1988 carbon-14 dating uh, showed it to be in the Middle Ages because they repaired it from the fire in 1532 with cotton. <laughs> and so they, they found that those samples actually had cotton in them. So they're dating uh, the Middle Ages repair in 1534. So uh, when I'm standing in front, you know, I'm an ER doctor, so I've seen lots of trauma. And I'm looking at like a, doctors were also trained as um, at, uh, really good at pattern recognition. And then in... Um, Two days later, we were in Lanciano, Italy, which is the Eucharistic miracle of 750 AD. So that uh, also is type AB blood, still is existing 1,350 years later, and it's muscle tissue, heart muscle tissue, just like the 21st century Eucharistic miracles. So there's so much other evidence, the pollen uh, throughout the shroud, if you look for the bear cloth, uh, they were able to identify every every area except where the crown of thorns was. And when they uh, then went to Jerusalem, it matched the pollen samples from a plant that only grows near Jerusalem. Uh, the nail, just like it's described in in the Bible, with the, uh, going through really the wrist because they didn't have a hand, they didn't have a word for wrist. Is the junction of the hand and wrist the only thing that would support the body? And that's four fingers. When you drive a nail through your median nerve, it causes it to curl. I mean, there's just the evidence goes on and on. I would take a, an hour and a half program <laughs> to, to go over all the evidence. Again, most scientists now believe it truly is the burial cloth of Jesus Christ. 
But again, you won't, if you do a Google search or whatever, you won't find that. And so what happened to me is I started looking at the literature because I know how to do research. You know, I haven't been a professor at Stanford and other medical schools. I know how to find the truth in, in science and it's overwhelming. It's just that no one knows it because again, our culture doesn't want to tell the truth. A million dollar uh, a prize if you can reproduce the shot. You can't because it's a nuclear image it's on the upper 0.2 microns. It's a 3D image. It's a perfect image. And, Jan, and just as it's described by John, who's the only witness of what happened at the, uh, at the crucifixion uh, that you know wrote about it, it's a great time to be alive because science actually does the opposite of what the culture claims. It actually affirms all the, the teachings the Catholic Church is teaching for 2,000 years. He really did uh, undergo horrific uh, torture uh, for crucifixion. He really, really is evidence of the resurrection, and it's just as described in the Bible. So, yeah, it's possible that aliens from outer space, did, you know, did all these things. They'd also have to travel through time, right? Because the 750 Eucharistic miracle, there was one in 1300. There's been many Eucharistic miracles, and now in the 21st century. So, how did it impact you, just looking at the shroud and being a man of science? Well, I knew there was more to the story, and that's what led me to do this additional research. And that's what, you know, and then the Holy Spirit led me to Father Spitzer uh, in 2015 as well. And so uh, ever since then, I've been going around uh, presenting this. And, uh, and again, you, you know, we're made for the truth. So when people hear the truth, they go, oh, this suddenly this stuff makes sense. You know, science is logical. We live in, you know, there are natural laws. So our bodies follow natural laws, but our souls, because they're not part of the natural, do not follow the natural laws. So basically, that's why we have an immortal soul. Uh, I tell this to the kids, go home and tell your parents, you know what, I have an immortal soul. <laughs> We're basically <laughs> lugged into existence. That'll change a lot of this anxiety, depression, uh, suicide attempts, because that's what we tell our kids. Ah, you're just, you know, just a you're just a bunch of random molecules. No, we were loved into existence, a creator of the God that from before time wanted us to be uh, to have a life and join him in heaven, our true home. Yes, the master creator is now showing us. <laughs> yeah, we now have the science to 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 say to show it. So again, it's a nuclear image. It would take six to eight billion watts of pure uh, laser light energy over one forty billionth of a second emanating from every part of his body, just like it's like just like shown in the transfiguration. The hands, so this is one of the things I noticed on the shroud, is the hands seem to be awfully long. The fingers seem awfully long. It's because you're seeing the bones of the hands. So you're seeing the outside surface as well as the inside. We don't have that technology today. So yeah, it's just if you just explore the science, you know, again, truth is binary. Several 21st uh, century Eucharistic miracles actually confirm the presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. Could you uh, share your insight on these miracles and their impact on the people's faith in this era? Yes. So again, we're made for the truth. Remember, we're made in the likeness of image of God, which means we have rational minds. And that's really what's been under attack right now, particularly in our education system, we you know teach relativism which is a logical contradiction you know that it's absolutely true that there is no absolute truth right a logical contradiction and so our, when you tell people the truth uh they have rational minds they go oh okay that makes sense things have to make sense to us important to have a q a sessions and in, in all these but basically what's happening is uh around the country when i give these talks and father spitzer does too is uh, people are connecting the dots. And the Eucharist is related, like I said, to the Shroud of Turin, so it's type AB blood, uh, related to the early Eucharistic miracles like 750 and Lanciano with heart tissue, which the one in Lanciano hasn't, hasn't degraded in 1,350 years, right? And there's no preservatives in that. But the ones that are in the 21st century uh, uh, so there was one in 1996 in Buenos Aires, and the reason we call it a 21st century Eucharistic miracles is we can't do math. No, it's because it's because the findings of the study didn't come out till 2005. In fact, they just photographed it, um, and in that one, this kind of was the template for all of them, is that um, it's living heart tissue 
with living white blood cells. And again, white blood cells don't exist outside the body for more than 30 minutes. And actually, it comports with the Bible, because remember, Luke, who was a physician, in Luke 22, 44, he describes how Jesus sweats blood in the Garden of Gethsemane because, you know, the horrific crucifixion he's about to go through. Well, these white blood cells in the wall of the heart aren't usually there. It's only during signs of trauma or, you know, uh, or stress. And so it's actually validating what, what John was saying is true. This is what's horrific, uh, both physical, mental, psychic, as well as a spiritual stress that he underwent. So that's why the white blood cells are there. And so Dr. Zugabi was actually uh, um, recorded uh, examining this and because uh, uh, they sent it to all different places across the world. Almost all these miracles are, are looked at by non-Catholic scientists. They want non-believers to look at this because they don't want it to be, oh, you guys just you know made this up. And he said, so I'm seeing living heart tissue uh, in signs of agony, like, you know, something would beat around the chest or some other, you know, some sort of, you know, blood issues, cells, which shouldn't exist there. Uh, where did you get this? And they said to him, some piece of bread, you know, <laughs> you Christ, he says, I don't believe it. <laughs> so, and then, of course, he became a believer. But yes, so that's, that's kind of the classic template. So a Eucharistic miracle is, yeah, it's, and so and so there's all, there's more and more of these all over uh, the next one was in uh, 2006, October uh, 22nd, 2006. And then the next one is in Sokoka, Poland on October 12th, 2008. And then the last one, God has a sense of humor. It's on December 25th, 2013. Now, there's something about December 25th that rings a bell. <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's how God is. I, I look at this. It's shouting at us. Now, the one in, uh, the one in Sokoka, Poland, um, on electron microscopy. So this was, this was examined at a medical school and uh, medical, uh, the medical, the, the two physicians, uh, researchers who looked at it and on electron microscopy, you can't tell where the bread stops and the living heart tissue with living white blood cells begins. And so, of course, they were, they were attacked by the media and all that, you know, the church killed somebody and put type AB blood and, and all this. And so they almost lost their jobs. Well, they sent it to another medical school and the same thing on electron microscopy. So God is like saying, uh, let me show you something. You want to see real science? Let me show you something. So living heart tissue uh, that's still alive with living white blood cells, um, uh, pretty compelling. And so when people hear this, they go, oh, okay, I guess there's more to it. And we can just go through all the connections. It also in John's gospel, remember, talks about the uh, the rolled cloth on the side. Well, we have that. That's a Sudarium in Oviedo, and they can date that. Uh, there's a Provence back to 600 AD. And a Provence means from one bishop to the next. Well, there's 120 blood stains on that. That uh, uh, so Shroud of Turin has 120 blood stains on the head area because that was that sudarium, that face cloth was ra wrapped around the head after he was uh, pulled, taken off the, uh, wrapped around to absorb the blood. And um, 120 blood stains, 70 on the front, 50 on the back. And if you digitally overlay the Shroud of Turin with sudarium Oviedo, they match. So again, uh, space aliens travel through time, I guess. I mean, you know, what's the other explanation? So that's what we talk about in science is what's the best alternative explanation. We can't explain it because it's a supernatural event. So we're seeing the effects. You can't see. Science is about what's observed. You can observe. We can observe, but we can see the effects. So the Shroud of Turner is the effect of a supernatural event. The 21st century Christian miracles are the, uh, the uh, observed effect of a supernatural event. Because again, the living flesh doesn't come from the natural world. And doctor, uh, we uh, actually recently had our faith uh, tested in the sense because of the two-year pandemic that all of us experienced worldwide. It caused fear, it caused anxiety, and uh, we had to really know who we were actually 
um, worshiping, who we are actually holding on to, trusting that things will get better or something will come out that will improve our lives. And it did. We had vaccinations and everything and people got better. Uh, but uh, on another side, the post-pandemic period has actually shown a rise of suicidal rates and depression among the youth across the country. So th these people, the young, um, thought that, oh, I could fill it with drugs. I could fill it with something to numb them, to uh, make them just overlook what is going on at their present situation. So that caused drug overdose and violence. So from a perspective of faith and spirituality, um, how do you think uh, you would be able to help the youth in their struggle to overcome their situations? Well, again, uh, back to the truth. So we're in the midst of a huge spiritual battle. Like I said, it's it's a wonderful time to be alive because Holy Spirit's shown up and said, let me show you the truth. Remember so how many times in the Bible, you know, when Jesus is being interrogated by Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate says, why are you on planet Earth? What does he say? To proclaim the truth. And then Pontius Pilate says, what is truth? Quid es veritas, which is the birth of relativism. So, so it's prophesied. That's where we're in right now. But again, God's given us, you know, rational minds. And so we can we can combat that with with the truth. But we're in the midst of a spiritual battle. So back to COVID it was uh, a 50, 50 percent increase in suicide attempts with adolescent girls with the lockdowns because we're made for community. We're made for communion. We were isolated. We were masked. We were. And so that prolonged thing has really and the, look at the devastation that's done. Um, and so uh, we've lost by by allowing the churches to be closed. We basically were saying, well, yeah, we got the virus is more you know, is, is more worrisome. You know, God's not maybe maybe God's not really in charge. So we have to recapture that. And I think that's what this Eucharistic Congress is about. That's what these pilgrimages are about. People are re recovering that. Wait a minute. God's in charge of life and death. Um, there is all this science right now to show that. And so it's it's making uh, people think twice. So I think it, it I think the tide is starting to turn. But again, we did. It seems like we got here overnight, but we've been we've been going down this road for a long time. And so it's going to take a long time to restore truth in our education system, particularly in our education system, um, and teach people how to think rather than just regurgitate facts. Um, and to be able to discern and know which logic, what logic is, and what logical contradictions are, um, and 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 tramp down the fear. Because again, what happens when you're afraid? When fear is increased, uh, your higher brain functions shut down, right? Because when you're running away from a lion, <laughs> you can't think about, gee, I, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow for lunch, right? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do what I do tomorrow for lunch. So, so, um, uh, so that's what happened. Fear was weaponized, and um, and so we have to come back for, uh, from that. And I think we are. Uh, there's lots of efforts going across, and um, you know, in Christianity is under assault because again, secular word claim, world claims that this is all uh, you know not not doesn't exist. Well, again. It does, and and that's what the evidence is, and that's why we have to keep keep out there proclaiming the truth. And in fact, even a lot of secular scientists, that's what intelligent design. There's a lot of secular people that realize, and there had to be a creator God because you can't explain how again how cells are alive, how 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 atoms suddenly do things that atoms molecules don't do. Right? They they're self replicate. They move. They seem to have purpose. They have you know they have life. How does that happen in organic? You know, it's so plants and animals have souls. They just don't have an immortal soul. That soul is both the life and animating process and the and our intellect and will. And I think we've lost that. And that's what really is uh, is, is coming back. And I will tell you in my talks, those are those are the th questions I get the most about. And that's really what turns people. Oh, OK. Yeah, that makes sense. My body comes from the natural world. But my soul does not. That life spark does not. It, it, uh, you know, molecules can't don't, don't think. <laughs> you know, we're not just a bunch of random molecules put together. And that really changes the debate about abortion. It changes the debate about transgenderism because again, we're made in like the image of God, and 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 we're meant to 
to go home to our real heaven, to heaven. And he made us male and female to be joined as one, just like the Trinity. And so it really changes the debate on all this because science is actually affirming that. And again, we can't have science without a rational world from a creator God. And, and doctor, I think of the major takeaway uh, from the pandemic, from COVID, was people realized isolation is not good for anyone, that we are supposed to be in a community, and a community is our church. It's not the building, it's all of us together. So speaking about community, this three-year-long Eucharistic revival will mark its conclusion it has been almost three years. Wow. <laughs> we'll mark its conclusion in July of the revival on the faith and the lives of the Christians. And what are the ongoing plans uh, to take this spiritual benefits forward? Yeah. So it actually, it's going to continue on. They're supposed to go out from, supposed to empower people to go out and hear these truths and go out um, and for the next year, go out in the community. Again, like you said, we're made for community. And this year after July is is about that. And so it's, it is transforming lives. There's, there's uh, more and more people speaking the truth, uh, more recognition that true science will eventually get to the truth and that a healthy debate is important rather than canceling debate, <laughs> censoring debate, particularly in science. It's really important, particularly in medicine. We don't debate treatments and stuff. Uh, we can cause a lot of damage. And so I, I think that that's uh, really important. Really important is going on. There's lots of people that are on fire over this. Uh, and again, we've been through this before. Every 500 years, there's a crisis in the church. And again, it's lasted for 2,000 years. The gates of hell will not prevail against my church because, again, it's God's church. He created the Catholic Church. No matter what happens, it, will, it won't go away, realizing that we're not in charge of ourselves, <laughs> right? I mean, we have free will. We can do what we want. But our, our, we're meant for heaven. We're meant for community, like you said. Yeah. So basically, you're saying that the spiritual, one of the spiritual benefits from the Eucharistic revival going to the Congress is truth has actually surfaced more. And it's now in front of people's lives, like saying, this are the truths that you actually have to see for yourself. Right. If they want to research more about it, then they could do that. Doctor, our conversation, we could go on and on. We could go for hours on discussing because yes. <laughs> you are uh, giving us a lot of information that we don't get to read about or hear about. And this will be uh, heard and seen by a lot of people worldwide. So thank you so much for gracing our show in conversation with, um, and we um, pray that you will continue to be a voice for the Lord, an instrument of the Lord in preaching the truth about who he is and that we were created and meant to be for other people also. So thank you so much, Dr. French, for being with us. Well, thank you. And, and remember in John 8, 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's where we are today. The truth will amen. set you free. <laughs> and God wants us to be free. So amen. <laughs> thank you. Amen. Thank you. Take care. God bless you, doctor. God bless.